What's the word, y'all? We're back to call game candy for real, whatever you want to call it. Listen to the earlier episode because the Trailblazers at this point are up by 31. I don't expect them to blow a 31-point lead. And if they do, I'll make another video where we can make jokes, we can make fun of them. But 30 is some, it's, it's different than the 20 that we've been seeing blown a couple times in the last couple days. 30? They're not going to do that. Be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. Listen, I don't want to spoil anything, but next month is a big, big month. Be on the lookout, bro. Be on the lookout. It seems like y'all like these videos, and these are not going away, but there are more. There's more stuff on, on the horizon. Why it's on my mind, let me talk about this Trailblazer game since it's right here. The progression of CJ McCollum's career has been ridiculous to me, how he started off as a guy that wasn't getting any PT to win it most of a player to now I think he's like top five in scoring point per game. He's averaging more points than Damian Lillard, and this is a big win for them. They get over 500, and more importantly than having Damian and CJ play well is Yusuf Nurkic has played well this game, and I was super high on this team about, you know, getting and Robert Covington and the depth that they had but none of that really matters if Yusuf Nurkic doesn't play to the caliber of player we know he can be and this is a good sign that maybe that's he's starting to get back there I mean you think about the injury he had I know he went to the bubble he wasn't that great in the bubble it's he's still not that far removed from the dramatic significant injury that he had I mean it's only been shoot he played eight games in the bubble right this is game number nine. He hasn't even played 20 games since that leg snap. So significant injury. I'm still expecting him to be better. Um, and when he gets better, the team will be dramatically better. So this is a big game for him. When it comes to the Kings, bro, again, a fun team to watch when things are rolling. Things are not rolling right now. Uh, coming out of halftime, typically a coach will have some. And I'm not blaming uh, Luke Walton. Trust me. Um, a coach will usually have a play out of halftime, out of timeouts. Uh, you know how it works after every quarter. The way their first play after the half played out was – Marvin Bagley got the ball at, like, the free throw line. He took a dribble, didn't look at the rim, and he threw it at it. The very next possession, they replayed the possession before. The man wasn't even looking at the rim, and it's infuriating to watch. There's a lot of things revolving around Marvin Bagley right now. It's hard to watch because I know what he can be. When they played against my Bulls last week, he was dominating us, and he didn't even play the fourth quarter. And that caused some animosity with his dad. But he didn't play the fourth quarter. He had, like, a 20, 2011 game, 2012 game, and he was great. And then the last couple games, it's just it's just hard to watch. It's just hard to watch. Let's get to the other games of the day. I did not get I did not get to watch every single game, so I'll spend some time on some of them. But like the 76ers versus Nuggets, I didn't watch much of this game. Honestly, I wanted to, but once I saw the starting lineups and stuff, I was like, you know what? I know Maxie's gonna do what he's gonna do because basically Maxie was out there having a um a my career game. That's what it was. And <laughs> congratulations for him for being a rookie and basically putting up 40 in the NBA game. But it was basically a my career game, man. And this is the first time so far this season where the health protocols, you know what I want to say, but I can't say it because YouTube demonetizes you, um, really took a toll on the team. And honestly, they probably shouldn't have been playing. We knew that they weren't going to win. You know, if they would have won, that would have been crazy. But they, we knew they weren't going to win. The health and protocol stuff, I, this is the first time this season that's really taken a toll on the team, and I'm hoping that this is not the first of many. Um, we've got some other tests like Jason Tatum, Michael Porter Jr., and hopefully this is just smaller scale and it doesn't get to the point where teams have to question, do they have to shut down their season for a time, suspend their season? We don't want that. Um, but shout out to Tyrese Maxey, bro. That, that's an insane stat line to have, you know. I think the name of this video has to do with LaMelo Ball because I sat down and watched the entirety of this game like in depth. And man, am, am I impressed with LaMelo. Now, I'm not a guy that gets associated with the hype of a player coming out of college, coming out of overseas. So when LaMelo was in the draft, I wasn't the guy that was going to say he's instantly going to be a superstar one day because I didn't know. You know, we, we've had players like that we think is going to be a superstar, and they just don't turn into that. I think LaMelo's on a trajectory, man. The last couple games I've watched of him, him has been amazing. I mean, for him to come into this game and get that triple-double, he was this close to getting the last game, and maybe that's why Biz Biombo was so super mad at him. Things are looking up for Charlotte basketball, man. This The last couple games have been dramatically different than the couple games before that because they were kind of down and out of things. Devontae Graham still ain't really shown Devontae Graham just yet, and I think I questioned why LaMelo wasn't starting, and I was uh, reading the comment section, and people were just saying, like, they don't want to get rid of Devontae Graham's um, confidence in the offense, which makes a lot of sense. I do think Devontae Graham is a good piece for this team, um, but again, I do think he's probably better suited as a six-man long-term, whatever it is. LaMelo's just too damn good to be coming off the bench, and one thing that I like about LaMelo Ball is that he, he sees the game so much better than the typical rookie. You know, like, there was possessions in this game where Trey Young was his defender, and he was like, oh, I'm taller than Trey Young. I'm going to put him on my back. I'm going to get him to the block, and I'm going to just shoot right over him. It happened a couple times in this game. And, and though that is super simple, that doesn't always happen. 
It doesn't always happen. He sees the game. Um, and one thing I really loved about this game was that we've seen a lot of small ball P.J. Washington, and you would think on paper that maybe that really w- wouldn't work out, but P.J. Washington was holding his own against Clint Capella. He was getting offensive boards. He was keeping the ball alive, and that is what they need. If they can run P.J. Washington as a small ball five long term, this team could be nice. This team could be nice. And P.J. Washington basically had his best game of his career, and the Martin brother did too. Um, when it comes to the Atlanta Hawks, bro, it's it's unfortunate – that they suffered the Bogdanovich injury. We don't know the extent of it just yet, but it's unfortunate that every, think about this, every one of their signings this offseason is on the injury list right now. At least the significant ones, Bogdanovich, Gallinari, Rondo, Chris Dunn, the draftee, and Aneke Okongwu, they are all on the injury reserve right now. And we've already heard about John Collins calling out Trey Young in the film session. I hate when stuff like that gets leaked out because it's okay for teammates to call each other out. That's how you you get better as a team. But for it to get leaked out to the media, now the world knows that maybe the chemistry is off a little bit. It's it's not looking good in Atlanta right now. For a team that started off so promising with a 4-1 start, right now it's tough. It's really tough. And Trey Young is not, I, I think I said this last time they played, where Trey Young is not looking like the Trey Young that was super confident in that first five games. I don't know where it went. Somebody said on on Twitter to me, if you got rid of that one game where Trey Young destroyed us, the the Chicago Bulls. When I mean, when I say us, if you take away that one game, then he is shooting worse from three than Luca is this year, and Luca's really struggling from three. I don't know where Trey Young's confidence is, but they need to get that back into him, whatever it takes, because he is your star, he is your bona fide ceiling piece of your team. You gotta get that confidence back because he is lacking it. Another game that I really enjoyed watching was the Suns Pacers game. Two of the top teams in the, in each conference going at it, and Mikael Bridges came out and did his thing. I love to see the homies of the channel um, really come out. No spoilers, but my boy Mikael said he would come on the show eventually, so we're looking out for that. I ain't pressuring him to do it anytime soon because he's in season and right now he's in extreme win mode. It's so it's so reassuring and, and satisfying to. Have a team that doesn't need Devin Booker to drop 30 to 40 for them to be competitive. You know, for the most part, Devin Booker been kind of chilling this season. He got 25 in this game, which is cool. But, like, there's been games where he ended with, like, 12, and they win. That is amazing. I really do like this team. I really do like this team. And Mikael Bridges coming out and having his career night was magnificent. Um, When it comes to the Pacers, Aaron Holiday basically did nothing this whole game. And... When when TJ Warren went out with an injury, I definitely expected like Doug McDermott or Justin Holiday to get those minutes because they they fit a little bit more. I mean, you already have two ball handling guards, Victor Ladipo and Malcolm Brogdon, so I didn't expect them to throw Aaron Holiday in the lineup. But I understand the team having a rotation, so maybe you don't want to take your first and second guy off of it. But at this point, Aaron Holiday has started for the past couple games, and he hasn't been amazing, hasn't been really good either. Um, I think they should probably chill out on his minutes a little bit and let him grow his confidence on the second unit. It and bring one of the other guys into the starting lineup because they could have used that. I don't have to say much about Sabonis. Y'all know what type of game Sabonis puts up a 2020. Not the only 2020 game from today, by the way, because um, Drummond had a 2020 game in a game that I did not watch. Oh, my God. Let's talk about the Heat versus the Wizards. Um, shout out to the Heat for getting that win. A lot of Heat fans are really, I don't want to say worried. Worried is probably an overstatement, but, you know, questioning Tyler Hero so far this season, and this was his best game of the year. Guess what I said in the last episode that came real? Russell Westbrook and Bradley Beal set out this game. And guess who was allowed to play basketball the way he plays basketball? Denny Abdiya was more than just a spot-up shooter, and we saw what he could do. I don't know why Garrison Matthews loves going against the Miami Heat, but he absolutely does, and he does career things every time he does. But 25-5 and five from Denny Abdiya, including 5 through like. They allowed Denny Abdiya to play Denny Abdiya ball, Denny Abdiya ball because they had no choice. With basically the three top players being injured, the first two sitting out, and then Thomas Bryant, please get well soon. We don't know the extent of his injury either, um, but getting injured very early in this game, Denny Abdiya had a lot of room to just play like he does, and it was great. It was great to watch, and I bet Wizards fans are, are hoping that they get more. Maybe Scott Brooks and like, oh. Okay, now, because maybe Scott, what if Scott Brooks, they drafted Denny Abdiya. He knew nothing about him. So he just put him on the wing. He didn't watch no Tel Aviv games or nothing. He was like, okay, this is just the guy that we have on our team now. And now he saw his potential. You see what he could do. Um, I didn't watch Bucks versus Cavs, but Drummond had a 2020 game and a very sloppy one, it looks like. Um, the Spurs versus Timberwolves game was probably the best game of the day going into overtime and things, where the Timberwolves just kind of had a brain mal- malfunction 
Anthony Edwards drives to the basket down by three in overtime, and instead of taking the layup, he tried to kick it out for the three. I understand this idea, but they probably they had enough time to get the layup foul and have another possession, but rookie mistakes. I'm not blaming him for this loss. Um, DeMar DeRozan had 38-5-5, five and five, and that like one thing I love doing when these games are on is watching these games with my friend. We hop into a call, like me, Derek, Pierre, y'all know some of these names. We were watching this game together, and we were trying to have a conversation about DeMar DeRozan's value. DeMar DeRozan took his player option this season. He'll be a free agent this offseason. Obviously, DeMar DeRozan is great. I would say DeMar DeRozan is extremely underrated now compared to where he was in Toronto. When you go to the Spurs, let's be honest, not many people are watching Spurs. I, I fit into that. Like, I didn't watch the Spurs much until these last couple games, and I've been enjoying it. But people don't really watch the Spurs. He has been amazing for them. This season, last season, he has been really, really good for them. Um, so I wonder, A, what team would be interested in him if it's not the Spurs bringing him back? And B, how much money would you, I'm asking you in the comment section, how much money would you be willing to pay a guy like DeMar DeRozan, who, who was a little bit maybe out of his prime, but still pretty solid? His defense has got better throughout his career. Like this game, he had possessions where he was locking up. Um, so I'm very curious to what y'all think DeMar DeRozan's value could be. Because I could see him going to a contending team, maybe on a lesser contract, and really helping that team out. Like, really, really helping that team, especially since so far this season he's been confident in taking the three. I ain't going to look at his percentages, but when I watch him shoot, he is more confident shooting that ball than he ever has been in his career uh, from the three-point line. For the Timberwolves, it is just so so great to see Carthony Towns back on the floor. And this whole time, I don't think he put the ball in his left hand. Um, you can see he's still having, you know, uh, pain in it and everything. But to see him on the court is great. I still question... The ceiling of your defensive team with Carthony Towns, D'Angelo Russell are your two best players, and I think they're the worst defensive team in the league right now. But obviously, Carthony Towns missed a lot of time. This is a game they could have won, and they sh let's be honest, they should have won. They had a couple farts at the end of the game that kind of cost them. Patty Mills turned into FIBA Patty, and then um, Dejounte Murray is probably on one of the best contracts in the league because he impacts every aspect of the game of basketball at this point. And this was another big game from him. Um, I did not watch Luca get a triple double and Tim Hardaway Jr. drop 36. So that's 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 today's slate of games, man. Lamelo's a star. Demar Derozan. Tell me in the comment section what you think his market is. All right, I appreciate y'all watching. Leave a like. Call the game.